the society that puts equality before freedom will end up with neither. The society that puts freedom before equality will end up with a great measure of both. Provocative stuff. And we now join our guests here at the University of Chicago. Mr. Friedman is right that all over the world people are beginning to stir and are striving for a measure of equality, for a measure of justice. But I think he demeans and trivializes those struggles when he tells us all that we can't all have Marlena Dietrich's legs. Moreover, he confuses us by using the term freedom. I think what Mr. Friedman means by the term freedom is economic license. And economic license, the economic license of those who control property and those who control capital has in fact been a threat not only to equality but a threat to the freedom of peoples all over the world and not only in Europe and in the United States but in Africa, in Asia and in Latin America. Let me get two other reactions now to that idea that this new ideal of equality, equality in this world's goods represents a very serious threat to freedom. Peter Jay. Well, first, as the only British person on this panel, perhaps you would like, allow me to say in passing that I think that many of the things which Professor Friedman says about the British experience in the last 30 years are a gross distortion and a gross travesty of what's actually gone on in Britain, and I hope that we'll have an opportunity to come back in the, in the course of the discussion. Very much. But I think that your question brings up what is, to me, the absolutely central confusion in the exposition that we saw in the film. And I'm a great admirer of Professor Friedman. I've studied him. I've listened to him. I've debated with him. And always before, I found him at least clear, even when he's been wrong. Today, I found him grossly confused, and in this specific and all-important respect, is he telling us that absolute equality is a mistaken objective, in which case I think he is tilting at windmills, he is attacking a straw man, there is almost nobody uh, on the other side of that argument. Or is he saying that any concern at all by societies and governments with reducing inequality is mistaken, is not only in conflict with freedom and efficiency and other human objectives, but is absolutely wrong, in which case I think he is talking absolute nonsense. His arguments tend to support the first rather platitudinous proposition that absolute equality, still less absolute sameness, is a foolish and exaggerated objective. His arguments do not at all support the second claim that it is wrong to concern oneself with distribution of income and wealth and reducing inequality at all. First of all, I would disagree violently with the notion that the people are stirring. A very small handful of intellectuals have generated an enormous amount of noise. When I look at opinion polls, particularly if I look at opinion polls of blacks in the United States, most blacks in the United States do not take any strong position in favor of equality of results. In fact, most of the polls that I've seen of blacks put them, if you want to use this expression, uh, very well to the right of most intellectuals on most of these social issues. It is not the people who are stirring, it is a handful of intellectuals. The question is not absolute equality, it's a question of what concept of equality you're, you're aiming at whether you're getting it absolutely or to one degree or the other. Are you aiming at a concept of equality of opportunity at the outset or are you aiming at a concept of equality of results? It's also not a question of whether it's material goods only. Whether it's material goods, status or whatnot, again the same question comes back. Are you thinking about equality of opportunity, prospective equality, or are you thinking about retrospective results at the finish line? And I think that's the crucial distinction. What I mean by equality is the concept I would like to see pursued is a concept that Tom Sowell just discussed of equality of opportunity. The concept that increasingly is being taken up by the intellectual community is, in, uh, is equality of results. Now nobody, and I agree with Peter, nobody means identity. Well, you nobody said so on the film. You excuse said so yourself. me. Absolutely. Nobody, you, all that argument about uh, we can produce a one human prototype and put him in the museum, right. that's exactly what you said. Nobody, when you press him, will say he means identity. And yet, if I take the logic of their argument, almost all the logic of such arguments proceeds as if identity were achievable, as if there were some way in which you could measure individual equality, as, again, as uh, uh, Tom Sowell was saying. You have to ask, in what direction are they moving? See, the fundamental distinction between you and me on this, I believe, is a very different one. I think there's all the difference in the world between a social or governmental system in which 90% of the people tax themselves to help 10% who are in distress, and a system in which 80% of the people in the middle try to tax the 10% on the top in order to help the 10% at the bottom. What you end up doing is you end up, Mr. A and B in the, you know, the ancient story of the forgotten man, 
you end up with A and B imposing taxes on C to help D, and some of it, after all, in the process, no, no, gets in the hands of A and B. You're dodging the fundamental issue which was brought up by Tom Sell. Are you saying to us that the only form of equality that one's entitled as a society, in your view, to be concerned with is equality of opportunity, and any concern with inequalities of result is illegitimate, that any inequality, however great, thrown up by, provided it's thrown up by a free market system and not by a caste system or a feudal system that, of which kind you disapprove, that any concern with that is wrong. Are you saying that or aren't you saying it? Because it's all important. Concern with whom? By whom? Concern by the society. The society doesn't have concerns. It has governments, it only has laws, people, it has parliaments. Only people have concerns. People do certain things through government. And I'm not going to talk about society having values. Society doesn't have values. People have values. All right. Values. Is it wrong for now, people to be concerned about inequality? It is not wrong for individuals in their private capacity to be concerned. Anybody who is really concerned can do something about it on is his own. Is it wrong own. for them to elect governments which do something about it? You yourself it's not wrong for them to elect You yourself have supported a negative income tax, which is a way of doing something about inequality. It's not wrong for us to do something through government about distress. Yep. But there's a fundamental distinction between relieving distress and doing something about inequality. I see no justification whatsoever for cutting down all the tall trees in order that there be no tree in the forest Mr. Friedman, that is taller than the When you say that it is wrong for government to intervene in the free enterprise system to do something about inequality, you evoke a model of a free enterprise system which does not exist and has never existed to a significant extent in history or anywhere in the world. That so-called free enterprise system has always used government the entrepreneurs of that free enterprise system have always used government. And the question that you raise is whether other people can use government to achieve their ends. That the is free not enterprise the system, as it is spread around the world, as it is spread to Asia and Africa and Latin America, has spread through the force of arms, among other things. And those arms were wielded by governments. That was government intervention under the name of the free enterprise system, but a government intervention which destroyed the freedoms of many people, not least of which of the people of Chile. I agree with you that everything called free enterprise is not free enterprise. I agree with Where you that many it? things have been done under the name of free enterprise that are not consistent with free enterprise. I agree with you and we stress over and over again in this series that whenever businessmen have the chance they will of course use government to pursue objectives which may or may not be in the interest of the public at large. But it, you always are talking about mixed systems, and I challenge you to find a single example in history at any time of any society where people have been relatively free, and I don't mean merely eco what you call merely economic freedom. I, I mean freedom in the full sense. I mean freedom of individuals to pursue their own objectives, their own values, to live their lives. I want you to name me any society in which you've had any large measure of that freedom, where capitalism and free enterprise has not been the predominant mechanism for controlling economic activity. Not the sole mechanism, but the dominant one. I want you to name me one exception. Your conception of freedom, does that apply in Chile today? Where the Chile is not system? politically free. Chile today does not have political freedom. And, and I do not condone, system? but let me go on for a moment, if you will. You raise the question, let me answer it. Chile is not a politically free system, and I do not condone the political system. But the people there are freer than the people in communist societies because government plays a smaller role, because the free enterprise that has been emerging has been cutting down the fraction of the total income of the people spent by government because unemployment has been going down, output has been going up, food production has been going up, the conditions of the people for the first, uh, for not for the first time, but in the, in the past few years, has been getting better and not worse. They would be still better to get rid of the junta and to be able to have a free democratic system. What I have said, and what I repeat here, is that it's a necessary condition. You cannot have a free society, in my opinion, and I know no uh, counterexample, and I challenge you to produce one.